I'm Tim Burton. This is Tim Burton Almost Live. We're down the Metropolitan Toronto Convention Center. I got that rap fucking yeah. bang on high on. Right? <laughs> How's it going? Good. Nice to see you again. Yeah. I, I was telling you just before we came on the air that, uh, all right, the Remy show, mm -hmm. did it suck for you? No, it was great. Really? Yeah. It sucked for us. It wasn't what I expected. Come on, there wasn't that it, many people. It was, well, yeah, this show's far busier. Oh, my God. It was also like a, when I heard the term facility, you think it's the market that we're looking for, but it was more like cleaning Cleaners. companies. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. Okay, so <laughs> I didn't see that coming either. Yeah. Either did Alex Byrne. <laughs> okay, so we're all yeah, in the we same all didn't see it, yeah. yeah. Would you do it again, though? Mm, probably not. I think our, our market. Okay, you just said it was an okay show, and now you're like, I'm not doing it again. The only time it's a good well, show is when you and, say, I'll go back. you know why I say that, and this isn't to blow smoke. We did the conversation last time, the podcast yeah. last time, and one of our clients heard Saw that it. podcast. Fuck off. Yeah. Really? So it created some validity for us. It's very nice. Your, your reach is quite wide. Okay, so... Last year, uh, like a whole year ago at this show, yeah. we had a little tiny booth and we had the podcast. And we did it with Bentall and a few big wigs, right? right. The sh and we had a live goat like yeah. we did at the last yeah. show. Yeah. And they told us never, ever to come back. Really? Yeah. So we said, fine, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did when I'm yeah. whenever. And, and, and they literally called a month after we tell them to fuck off. They told me to F off and I said, I, yeah. I don't care. And they literally called a month later and said, okay, we were wrong. Eh. So it created a good stir. Well, so because uh, Chuck Nervick in the media ed show, the Remy one that you said, right? I so Chuck and I made a side deal to do the show and cut costs, mm. and it was a bit twisted, and it wasn't as it wasn't as good for us financially as it should have been because the show has cost us, by the way, just so you know, they cost about fifteen hundred dollars to produce and edit. Yeah. And by the way, there's good value for Stadia, Burn on Demand, my companies to be involved with you. Right, right. And right. vice versa, like you just had a guy say, "Okay, I know Tim Burn almost live," right? Yeah. So, but uh, the funny thing is, when we did the when we did the Remy show, I I got pissy with with Chuck, and I said, Chuck, I, I said I have more viewers than you had attendees. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, like legitimate, like legit, like I'm like, yeah. dude, my average podcast is getting seven, eight, ten, twelve thousand. Like yours is up to over ten now. Right. And I'm like, I had three times the amount of people. <laughs> you realize that I'm the reason the Remy show is still alive. Yeah. And he's like, mm. <laughs> I'm like dude, so. Informer contacts me and goes, wow, you've got a popularity. Mm. And, and the truth is the only reason the, and now there's like four, five, six podcasts for property management throughout the U.S. and Canada. Seven spots. Ainsworth yeah. is trying, right? Okay. All that kind of stuff. Okay. And the only difference between mine and everybody else's is mine's not corporate. Right. So people like which watching is, a car accident. Which is usually what people like. <laughs> oh, no, for uh, sure. Rubberneckers, right? They're yeah. like, holy crap, I can't believe he said that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mixed in with... Some cool tech and mm. some, some cool shit and some entrepreneurs that risk it all and go bankrupt and get stuck on cocaine or, yeah. you know, all the things that can people flip, like your, drama. <laughs> flip your card upside down in real life business yeah. shit. So people are watching my show mm. because uh, Connex has one. There's two or three. Uh, Connex is Prism, uh, the retailer. Thing, okay. And Ainsworth has one, and uh, but they're all very sterile. Right. I, I was, you said Ainsworth. I was like, hmm. What? I wonder like, what that's like. like. Hello, and thank you for coming to Ainsworth Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Today's guest will be Adam. Yeah. Adam's been working very hard for the last five years on his new technology, and we're going to discuss his new technology today. Yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck, I just ate a whole bag of paint chips, and I'm dying. Mm. And that's why they're not, that's why they're getting 600 views. Right. Right. And then I, they talk to me. Pe people, people. I find people like real, and their bullshit alarms are on high alert the last couple of years. Okay, so that's actually why Donald Trump survived. Yeah, because uh, people always go with fake news, and he's a liar. Right. Uh, he just says the way he sees it. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to like his opinion. Yeah. But he's not. He's not giving you fact. He's giving you editorial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's giving yeah. you an opinion, not fact. He's not zero filter on him. <laughs> yeah. There's no facts. No. It's opinion. Yeah. Which are a lot different than facts, right? Yeah. What I believe and what really happened are two different stories. Mm. And 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 for whatever reason, the back, the backwater Tennessee and the backwater Kentucky, yeah, love Donald Trump, right? Because he just goes, "You're an idiot." Yeah. I think they like the strongman businessman. And I mean, I, I like the idea of Trump, not to get too political. Okay, his bedside, ma his bedside manner sucks. Yeah. I got it. He's yeah. a little rude. Yeah. Right? Okay. But 
the Ukraine the Ukraine thing. Let's talk about that for two, before I talk about your yeah. products. I really want to talk about your, yeah, your no, shit you're doing. You. But the Ukraine thing. Mm -hmm. The truth is, any one of us as a businessman, yeah, would have tried to make a side deal. Yeah. And everybody goes, well, but you're the president of the United States. You go, you're fucking running the large. By the way, it's the uh, the, cor the the corporation of the United States of America, like. Uh, like that. Like it's, it's, it's really it's a, a business, company. right? Yeah, like the, yeah. the United States is a business, right? And and if he could make a deal with somebody to get something done, mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing. And yeah. you don't think that the Kennedys or the Bushes or the Clintons or Obama, all those guys didn't go. Listen, so yeah, <laughs> right. Of course, I'm going to send over a few extra troops. Yeah. Can you make sure the oil makes it through the Panama Canal? They've made some very good movies based on all this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wag the dog and shit like yeah. that. You're like, okay, come on. Yeah. Don't Bullshit yourself. Yeah. Just because he went, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And then and they can't get him. No. They're going to try to get him on some moral thing now. And you're like, you have to get every single president on a moral thing. Right. Because business is, um, you can't help, but business is dirty. You have to work a little harder, stretch your resources, make crooked sideways deals. You, you can't even help it. Because you, you, you can't win. You can't mm -hmm. get it. Yeah, for all you kids, you, you don't, you can't win without cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And there's you, no Santa. You bend. You bend. And you don't get a blue ribbon just because you showed up to the track meet. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to bend and mold and yeah. and, 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 and adapt. adapt be resourceful and, and and work with what the market and tells you. Beg somebody to help you get something and totally. can I please show. Listen, I've asked my customers to show me the other guy's price. Yeah. I begged for it. Yeah. And I've actually told my customer, I don't want the job. Can I just hear everybody else's quote? Because mm. I've never done this before. Right. And I'd like to see how everybody else wrote it. And you know what? I'd, I, it's, it's shocking how helpful people can be if you just ask. I think people are always afraid to ask. Yeah, they're afraid to offend or yeah. they, uh, they did what Trump did and got on the moral line. Mm -hmm. But you have to walk on that cliff, eh? Yeah. In business for yourself? Totally. How is your dad? He's good. How's the business? business How's the plumbing inside? Plumbing side's great. I mean, look, plumbing's recession-proof, always needed. Do you have a tough time finding industry. staff? Yes, incredibly yeah. tough. That is my only challenge. There's more work than we could do because of a staff shortage. Really? Yeah, the young. I mean, I was lucky. I'm young, er, but I was really now, thrust how old are you, 50? into uh, 49, <laughs> turning 49. Uh, I was thrust into this whole industry and a business, and so it was a little different for me. But you got married. Yeah, I got married young. Yeah. Kids young. Yeah, you're the whole bit, right? Business young. Yeah. Uh, and it was just because of that. At 18, basically, my dad said, I'm, I'm moving from my comfortable job and starting a career. Your dad's helped finance your kooky gizmo. No, no. Did he not? No. Uh, my mother actually gave me a personal loan. Uh. That really started it off. Uh, but no, we, we had investors. Are your mom and dad together? Yeah, yeah. And your mother gave you a loan, your dad didn't? Well, of course, it's it's both Mama's of their boy, money. right? Yeah. <laughs> As your mother said. But it was, no, it was like literally I went to her and she's like, here's Your dad went, you went to your dad, your dad went, grand. fuck off. You yeah, go to your he, mother and your mother's like, give out of some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be my mother. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's <laughs> shocking that they like, they believe in these wild ideas of their kids. It says a lot of parents. And now I have kids, so now I kind of get it. We were talking um, about that chick on the internet a long time ago. Remember the little girl who burnt off her hair with a curling iron? Yeah, yeah. And she did well. Okay, this is how you curl your hair. Video. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> awful. She went, uh, Alex Burns said this morning, she was on Ellen, and her mother literally grounded her for posting it. Uh, only ended up getting three or four or five million views. Yeah. It was and making madness. a shit pile of money. Right. It was mad. Yeah. And, and you're right. So parents. Because your parents are around my age, right? I'm 52, yeah. right? Yeah. So parents... Uh, uh, they're like 10 years older. All right. So, yeah. Uh, but people, older generation people are scared to take social media risks. Yeah. Where guys your age, and I'm very young for my age, I mean, I'm really, I take social media risks all the time and right. I don't care. Right. Because what you realize is that whatever you publish today is tomorrow's garbage. Yeah. If you ever looked at LinkedIn posts, I mean, they're coming out so fast. At the bottom you, of the feed in you, minutes. Yeah, in seconds, right? Yeah. Like, you better be posting yeah. a lot even yeah. to get yourself close so six months ago you and i were shooting the shit and you had about 13 mm. or 15 buildings yeah teed yeah what do you got now uh so we're up to 50 
Really? Uh, we have like 20 in the pipeline on the new construction environment now, which is getting very interesting. Why didn't you do the Collier's innovation thing? So we're, we're speaking to all the usual suspects, you know, the JLL. But do you know that, have you gone up to that Collier's booth? No, no, I had All right, so Collier's is doing Collier's innovation. It's a mm -hmm. big deal this year. They, they move it around. Okay. They get guys like you to apply for the, uh, a creative, innovative new product on the market. Awesome. Then they vote, yeah. and they give you grants. Collier's does. Oh, really? Yeah. You go and walk out to that booth before you leave. Of property, yeah. Because yeah. there's some loser over here trying to do the same thing you're doing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about it. The, your, your goat yeah. uh, is a plumber. Yes, the guy yeah, has a plumber. So we were chatting, and I, uh, in short, I said, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. The majority of it's for single family home. Yeah. We kind of talked about consumer it last time. Consumer product, right? It's consumer product. And the market that we're after had two options. You buy toys at Home Depot or you spend 100K on a BAS system. Right. We're trying to find the place in between. So you have 50 billions on the go. Mm -hmm. 20 in, in new construction. 20 in a pipeline and, and things are just are building up Are you picking up, up the now. monitoring on the backside now? Yeah. So, so in general, we monitor the health of equipment, but the, it's not a, like a call center. We're not going after this call center type Sure, it's technology model. monitoring, not human monitoring. Right, but the principal idea, and I think the biggest difference is kind of a segue from what we were just talking about, is, is empowering that plumbing community, the mechanical community, the service community. You know, when I had the plumbing business, I had, again, the we option kind of, of buying do, the toys. Right? Well, the problem with the BAS stuff, all these controls, the, yep. the very high-tech equipment, I'd have to go to school for like a year, basically, right. to understand and learn and install this stuff. And I always compare it, what we're doing, you know, when you wanted to get a website, you had to learn how to oh my write God, HTML right? code oh, and hire you. a firm. And today you go to Wix.com, you throw in your business yeah. name and it spits out a website. Right. Trying to disrupt it that way. Sure. Empower like everybody. Want to be the Uber to, of, of monitoring. Right. Right. So you can, everybody can Let go do it. Let the masses go do right. it. Right. Do you know, I talked to, you I talked to Yardy. Yeah. And they want to buy you. Yardy. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Well, of course, On they're, couch. they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're global. Yeah. I talked to one of their global guys. Okay. And I asked him if he knew about you, and he did. Really? Yep. So we can start a horse race. It's interesting. You, you talk to a lot of the large plumbing manufacturers, yep. and they make faucets and yep. valves and whatever they do, but in their wheelhouse is not IoT, cloud-connected devices, equipment. Is it because it's just too hard to penetrate the market? I think these, no, these companies are too big. <clears throat> to do it themselves. Well, innovation does not come from a giant. Innovation comes from uh, starving, yeah. in the trenches, dirty. Yeah. Guys who know what they're doing, you know, and then adding, solving yeah, problems, listen, solving real problems. Adversity yeah. uh, causes innovation. Totally. So when you're starving, yeah. oh mom the money, <laughs> yeah. your parents are looking at you like you're an idiot, yeah. and uh, I hope to God you know what you're doing, yeah. and why don't you just give this up and go back to being a plumber? Right. Uh, you know, working with your hands, just right. like your dad did. Well, you know, you, right? you're like, no, yeah. I'm, I'm going the right way. You know, your perseverance, right? It becomes oh man, brutal, Persistence. Right? How many times has anybody told you to quit? Far, though, right. Oh, a hundred times. Fuck, I, right. You know, All my the time. my favorite thing in the world is being shredded at <laughs> one of my earlier meetings. By a landlord who basically said, <laughs> "Who was it? Come I'm on, never gonna who do was this. It? Who was it? Come on, who I forget. You? It was some small, like private. He had like five, six buildings, and we were connected Tore through down. one of our investors. Yeah, and yeah, I just sat in the meeting. I was way too early. I had no clue what I was sure. doing. I built a cool thing, but I didn't know how to sell it <laughs> sure, yet. Right. And yeah, he just shredded me. But I left the meeting, and I didn't pout and walk away and say, you know, I suck. This is not gonna work. You got to learn from that." You got to figure out. Okay, come on. Did you suck? He doesn't did, like that. Did, did, you, did you walk away going a little bit going? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, right? I'm not. <laughs> I'm, those, I'm right? human. <laughs> sure. But my reaction is, you know, fuck. I got to figure out how to sell this better. What can I tweak as far as my message? Yeah, you, yeah, you know what I to I, get you, it going. By the way, I, and I really like. I liked you the first time I met yeah. you. I thought you, were, you got your shit together, right? Yeah. Remind me of my son. Okay. And and I, and when people tell me I can't, yeah, uh, you shouldn't, you couldn't. Don't, won't. Yeah. Those when people say shit like that to me, I'm like, so when I started this podcast those two years ago, people were like, oh right. hey, don't. And I was very vulgar and and crass. People were like, don't. You shouldn't. Yeah. Can't. You're gonna wreck everything. And I'm like, doesn't it make you want to do it more? Well, fuck you. Right? Yeah. I'm going for it. It literally gives me fuel. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's when you know you're truly an entrepreneur, right? But for sure. Nut doesn't fall very far from the tree. No, not at all.
right? Not at all. My mother did nails in our basement my whole childhood. I sat next to her leg as a little baby. and She, she had a hammer, 20 ounce? Crushing it. Just crushed the nails into the wood. Yeah. <laughs> she was making Wrong like, nails, right? That's the wrong nails. She was right. making like a thousand bucks a day. Yeah, but working, like, working seven her brains to, out. 7 to 8, 9 p.m., picking up the kids and just cash, cash, cash. Yeah. And supported our whole childhood. And pay taxes. Yeah, of course. Always pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, <laughs> much uh, more big cheap. But yeah, I think it's I think it's it's a bit of your upbringing. It's a bit of passion, and then obviously persistence to actually take it there. When uh, when I was in 1980, 1990, I had a similar experience. You know, you said the guy tore your new ass and said your yeah. thing is shit. Get yeah. out. You don't know what you're doing. Go back and be a plumber. You're a moron. Right. I had the same experience on a job site with David Bennett, the executive vice president of Menke's Development. Okay. At the time, yeah. he's retired now. I'm, yeah. I I still uh, him and his wife Rose, right? Yeah. Um, so he's 40 and I'm 21 or two, yeah. literally stood up with hard hats because I, he was at a new construction site and I was just going there to go, I own Stadia, give me a job, right? right. And, and I didn't know fuck all what I was doing. I'm standing there with a hard hat and we're standing shoulder to shoulder <laughs> and he doesn't make eye contact with me, right? He goes, Tim, go back and work for your father. Uh, You're an idiot. <laughs> You're never going to survive. It's a fucking doggy dog market out there and you have no idea what you're doing. And I, and I could literally, <laughs> I could literally remember going, yeah. and he, we didn't make eye contact, and I could feel my, in my shoulders, and you know, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, motherfucker. Right. I went back to my car and I cried. It's devastating. Well, I was on unemployment insurance at the time. Mm. Like I was poor, poor. Like yeah. I'm in dirt dog poor. And I, I sat in my car and I cried. I was holding my steering wheel and tears running down my face. Fuck. And I'm like, motherfucker, I, I gotta find a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I put the car, uh, the truck, I was a pickup truck, put it in drive, and I drove away, and I got in the QEW. It was down near um, Winston Churchill Boulevard. Okay. I got on the highway, and I went, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So that's what happened. It was of a moment. Course you're right? devastated at first, oh. but then you realize you're like, I I if you know what, what your goal is, did right? Did you, you tell can get anybody? By it? The day that that person did that to you, did you go home and tell your parents, or were you too scared to have them go, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. quit? <laughs> Right? You don't want to tell my anybody. parents you don't were tell actually anybody. very supportive. I never worried about telling them anything because they weren't the ones to say, you, you know, gotcha. don't do this. They were the opposite. Um, no, I, I, I just don't care. I move on. And, and as cheesy as it How sounds, it's because I know this How shit deserves kids? to live. Uh, my oldest is six, and we have four. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> Alex Burns just said, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. It kind of pulled off the bed. We you? wanted kids. Uh, 32. Yeah. 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 I would do. I would do. So much fun. And I feel right, old. So much fun I feel though, old. Right? I, we're not going to live kids? forever. It's the best thing in the world. Right? Like 80% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the, like but the 80% overwhelms that shitty 20% when they're yeah, driving you crazy. Right. I mean, they're kids. They're kids. Okay, so now your business is viable enough that you, you, you feel like it's adolescent? Uh, not a child anymore? It's... Yeah, it's not like a baby idea. We know the market. Uh, we know how to sell it. Are you still it. developing it? You always do software, right? right. You're always going to tweak and your mess own guy, around. The, your own code guy, the, your own software? Not in-house. Okay. We early on recognized we're not coders. We right. just know yeah, what architect. we want. You're architects. We're architects. Right. And yep. so we built everything ground up, but we're, we're utilizing some so vendors. You're using locally. contractors. You're the exactly. architect, designer, producer. Yeah. No, no, I, want some I need the cameraman, <laughs> and he's outsourced. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's all done locally, which I love. I, I actually, the hardware is built in Scarborough, which is cool. Is it really? And it wasn't like a green, you know, we want to make it local kind of decision, sure. but we were able to do that. And it doesn't make sense to do it overseas. And you, so feel, more, and you feel intimate with it? Totally. How would totally. you, you handle the, um, like the copyright and the pa patents and all the shit? So that when you went to a manufacturer locally, he didn't just fuck you over? Uh, well, most manufacturers don't anyway. You I know what? That. Fortunately, our, our real secret sauce isn't on the hardware. It's really so, more on yeah, the cloud. The cloud. And yeah. So they never nice. see that. So the guy building the computer yeah. chip doesn't know what its purpose is. Has no is. idea, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was one way how to get beyond that. So you're doing buildings in Ottawa now? Uh, we went to Ottawa for the RPIC trade show. What's RPIC? So it's like a government type trade show. Uh, similar to, you know, building show, but it's all service providers trying to go after government contracts. Oh, we're going to try that. Yeah. I pick? So, uh, our pick. Our pick? It was kind of lame. It was a very quiet show. I lame? think they need to like... Spice it up. Spice it up. Maybe but a little Tim Burn almost live. Yeah. <laughs> really. They need... you got, you got to have that 
that oh, I've fire had behind it. Right? Yeah, if you don't, it sucks, right? It's boring. You walk yeah. around. When I see the table with the the frills around, it's like very depressing. <laughs> yeah, the blue, the blue. Yeah, th- yeah. Like the very like standard yeah, the skirt around. The so thing. in March, CMPX. What's CMPX? CMPX. Oh, these are good tips. You ever hang tight? These? Yeah, uh, I don't remember the acronym, but it's basically uh, they do it every two years, and all the big mechanical. You know, plumbing manufacturers, mechanical boiler companies, they all bring their stuff there. And as, I, that? as I said, so I th- think it's probably like MTCC again, Kay. maybe South Building, North Building, whatever it is. It's downtown. Yeah. Um, what's good for us is I've learned as part of this whole process how important it is to get this stuff in the hands of service providers. Really? Yeah, you can't sell our shit direct. Do you find there's a conflict though between your dad's plumbing company and what you're doing? No. Do people go, hey, man, I know your dad, fuck you. Right. I mean, if it's, if it's really I, intimate and they think, right? you know, you if they know us at that level, right. but not really. I think they get excited about what this is sure. capable of doing. Um, well, and, it's, and it is a different business. It's a totally different business. This is me yeah. running Timber and Almost Live because I've invited my competitors to come on. Right. And I don't care. Yeah. Right. Whether you know Stadia or not, I'm fine. I don't give a shit. You know what? The best thing I ever learned people, the first thing people always say to you, why don't you patent it? Why don't you do yeah. this? Because they're always thinking someone else is going to walk See, with yeah. the idea. If I've learned anything, 99% of people don't do anything. Yeah, so you're right. A, uh, 90% of people don't have the motivation to get off their fucking ass nope. and do it. And if the ones that do do it, they want to be independent. Right. They want to make a better mousetrap. Yep. Uh, the other thing I realized, too, is that um, w- with entrepreneurs and inventing shit is that there is no moment. Everybody buys their shit from the same grocery store. This is a, this yes. is a chef, right? Yes. Everybody buys all the fucking groceries from the same grocery store. Totally. But, the, but how you run your kitchen mm-hmm. is really the secret sauce. Absolutely. It's you. Yeah. Right? And how you develop the process and the procedures to get you where you are. Right. Everybody's buying the same lettuce, the same pork chop, the same fucking pasta. Yeah. From the how same many times have you heard, I, I thought of Uber, right? Right. Like, great. You didn't do anything with it. So right. who cares? Everybody's <laughs> buying, and everybody had access to the same programmers. Right. Right? Yep. And the, right? They just had, everybody's access to cameras. Yep. Right, just and like you said, I can't, I don't, I want, people say that too. I can't start a business. How can I find money? How, how can I do this? How often does that happen, right? Uh, Be resourceful. You know how many people have said that to me? <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I can't, I got, uh, I got kids, I can't, I got uh, debt, I can't. Right. I'm a high school dropout. Yeah. I'm a nothing. Right. I live in a basement shitty apartment, I'm locking on employment. Yeah. And everybody says, oh, you know, uh, you had a, you know, go away. No. If you want to do it. If you want to do it. There's a story... Uh, and I won't make it long, but it's basically a, a teacher teaching a student, and he says, meet me at the beach. They go to the beach, and he's like, I want to learn you know, how to be an entrepreneur. Yep. And he, the story's longer, but he basically tells the kid to walk into the ocean to the point where it's almost above his mouth. And when it is just before that, the teacher says, go even further. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm going to drown. He goes, you have to want to win, to, to have that business more than you want to breathe. Like that natural instinct yeah. to breathe, it needs to be at the same level. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to have yeah. a business. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. It's sexier than ever. But they want it for the money, for the glory, the fame, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't well, they work. Want to put, they want, so I've, uh, I, you, you're right. So what people want to do is want to put their feet up. Yeah. I hear people all the time. I, I want to I want right. all, the, I want all my business so I, can, so, so I can be a millionaire and put my feet up. Yeah. I want, I want to sit on the dock, you yeah. know? And you're like, no fucking sit. There's no. no sitting on a dock, no. eh, when you own your own business. There's none at all. No. None at all, right? All right, so tell me, uh, Reed Water, where are you located now? Have you moved? No, Did we're you? still in Concord. Okay. Uh, our, our reach is starting to spread further, which is interesting. Um, getting into, like, Houston, Boston. Really? Yeah. So, and, and it's purely from that service provider angle, right? Let's get this stuff in wow. our hands. Um, here's the thing. As a plumbing company, you're pretty unsophisticated. And so being able to connect with your customer digitally, a new customer, and show them what you do differently than you know, the little residential plumber, it, it allows you to be a better service provider. You catch things so early. Are you going down to Houston and Boston? No, so we're meeting. So there's a father-son team in Houston. Similar story. Yeah. Uh, uh, the father's like immigrant. You know, he's got the skills. The son is more formally trained financially, and he's blown up a business there. And you know, here's an example. You you put in a booster pump in a building, traditional. Yep. You have a direct drive. I'll put a variable speed. Great. He's taking our product and incorporating it without even asking into that package, so that he can monitor the pressure of the pump, and have a valve to close the building, 
and he says, this is my way of doing business. I am better than everybody else. I'm connected to your building. And it gives you an opportunity to have a conversation 60 days later. Do you need anything else, right? So how many guys you got working for you? How many people? Uh, so our core management team is five. Wow. Um, and then we utilize like plumbers to do installs. Sure. Uh, we have a sales force going out and we're still doing some you direct sales. People? Yeah. By, by just sort of the nature of how things are going, but it's getting uh, uh, less and less. We launched the commercialized product in February of this year. We were working on it for two and a half years. Um, so we made like, an, the first shit we made was hot glue gunned to a piece of plywood. And we had like three <laughs> customers. I love that. And that was what we started with Who's off the shelf customer? stuff. Uh, you know, this guy, he had a couple plazas and wanted to do some sub metering and had flood issues. Like that's, that's how it started, solving a problem. I um, love that. Then we turned it into something a little more sophisticated. Do you have photos of it? Yeah, yeah, I have it still in our office. Can you? Yeah, can you totally. send us some yeah. so we can put them as part of the podcast? We have like we have like three I evolutions. I just want the photo now. of the shittiest yeah. hot glued gun mesh you got. Happy to. So I, I love think it. that's. I love it. That's something you're gonna put in a glass case, right? I, me and my co-founder yesterday it was 1 a.m. We're in the office, obviously working late, and that's what he said. He's like, I want to have all of the versions of our equipment along the wall. <laughs> you give me that. You give me that, and I'll glass box it for you at yeah. my shop. Yeah, cool. Oh, glass, right. right? Perfect. I'll, I'll, glass, I'll, glass, I'll glass box it for free. Deal's done. He's going to be real free, happy. I'll, glass, I'll make a nice cute and, and his birthday is December 20-something. So We're going to glass box it for present. free because I think that is the best ever that, that awesome. you still have that piece of shit. It is what your life is all about. Yeah, right? no, it totally is. It's what you show your kids totally 30 is. years from now and go. I'm excited to try and embed some of my learnings to them. And they're going to take it with a grain of salt and think so. they're the smartest people in the world. and Typical. but uh, Yeah, kids are jerks. I was. Now I'm not. <laughs> How many times did you quit in your old man? Quit on him? Yeah, did you, did you fire you get quit? Never. You got fired. No. You got we, fi- have, we have a good relationship. You never got fired by your dad? Never. I get yelled at like crazy. <laughs> How, crazy. Badly, yeah. How badly yelled at? Like, like fucking like, losing? No. So he yells at me all the time. Like Babcock and I, and I appreciate it now. Yeah, like loud, freaking out, like leaves. Sure. The one thing though, once, he didn't answer my phone call. And that fucked me up because he always answered my phone. And that, that was, like, too much. I was like, listen, like, come on. I know you're pissed off. Got to answer the phone. Um, so that was, like, whatever. But uh, I had a friend of mine, his son, Liam Morris. Uh, Danny, he was working for his dad's carpenter. And Liam works for me now. But um, his dad's driving home one night. And his dad and I are best friends. His dad's driving home one night, and they get in a fight in the car. He fucking pulls over and kicks him out. He says, walk home. Yeah. Get the fuck out of the that's, that's something my dad would do. He told one of his employees once to take the bike and, and go home because he had the work truck, obviously, right? My dad used to fire me all the time. Yeah. I'd always come back the next day. He'd fire me. Fire me. Get the fuck out of the right, shop. Right, right. Blah, 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 hurling wrenches at me and shit, yeah. right? And I'd leave. Yeah. Right? And the next morning, I'm sipping coffee at 7. Back. Right? <laughs> back. Yeah. And him and I wouldn't talk for like two hours. Yeah. You know, and i just in the shop. And then, because they yell at you, not because they hate you. They, oh, no, they yell at you. They're frustrated that you don't listen to what they think is right. Right, because they want to make you better, right. bigger, yeah. faster, stronger. That's and they're right mean. sometimes, they're wrong sometimes. Actually, it isn't even the, con- it isn't the ideology, yeah. it's the methodology. They want you to have that killer. Right, right, fu- right. They don't, this isn't the actual, this is how you use a screwdriver. Yeah. I want you to have the killer instinct. It's a good point. You know what, I actually totally agree, and I think it's their fear that world that's the dog eat dog world is going to eat their kid <laughs> yeah and you go i'm not going to let you i'm going to put a thick skin in your hide yeah i'm going to make sure you know that i don't give a fuck how how you use that screwdriver mm. but damn it if you're going to let anybody mow you over right so i need you to think faster yeah i need to find problems and solutions faster you, and i'm you, not you, and i'm not going to let you i'm not going to let you be weak yeah you've nailed it and and i think well I, and it's funny too because i probably wasn't until in my late 30s that i realized that my dad just didn't want me to be weak for sure do you get it? It yeah, had nothing yeah, totally. to do with the screwdriver or how I cut glass no, or how no, I no. fucking cocked a joint. Or, he, he just didn't want me to be weak. Yeah. Right? He wants yeah. you to be strong and, and confident. And that's how they... Totally. The blue ribbon thing doesn't make kids strong and confident, eh? No. Uh, the sixth place badge? Yeah. No, yeah. The, no, <laughs> yeah the sh- I showed up badge? Yeah. 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 You need competition. Competition's You need healthy. to lose. I sucked when I was young. I you need lost to lose. a lot. You need to lose. Yeah. To win. It's frustrating. Yeah. And all the kids, <laughs> all the kids, like, don't let your kids get a blue ribbon at the track no, and field no, me. No, 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 no. They come home and you should chuck it out. Yeah. 
I talk to my six-year-old now like she's 25. Like, yeah. if she says something yeah, stupid, it's funny, I'll that call her out. By the way, when you have a 25-year-old, you talk right. to them if you're six. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming yeah, on. No, I'm really excited. I will make that glass box for you. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to connect with you. Guys. Uh, I'm going to send you that picture at the very Reed, least. Reed Water uh, is going to save you a ship pile of water and find <laughs> the trap water and lost water in your building. And they're going to do it for one-tenth the price at the Honeywells and all the big moronic companies can do it. And they're innovative and they're creative. And I, I think Adam's a rock star and I think you should call them. What's your phone number? Uh, 416-902-0099. I'm Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne Almost Live. We're down at, here at the Property Management Show in the Metropolitan Toronto Convention Center. That is Adam at Reed Air. And he'll be back in about six months making about $5 million a year. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thanks so much. Yeah. Always nice seeing you. Yeah, you too.